The State of the Race series on audio podcast is available wherever you get your podcast under the Stew Does America stream. It's a free bonus pod, and the next one drops tomorrow morning. Lots of new polling on the race. We'll give you all the details there. Uh, you can catch us on uh, YouTube as well, youtube.com slash America. Be sure to subscribe, check out the videos, and click the bell for notifications. Bridget Fetessy is here today to return to the program. It looks like, by the way, the two dudes who made a sex tape in the Senate are going to get off scot-free, which uh, is unfortunate wording, but we'll get the latest on that to you. We're going to start, though, by doing the truth about your Stanley mug. I don't know. Is, is mug the right term for these things? I don't know. I, tumbler? Cup? I don't know. Oh, I know. Keeps stuff really cold. And I like it. Stanley mugs. Stanley cups. Stanley tumblers. They're everywhere. Everyone has one. Uh, my, in fact, I would say, if my house is any uh, indication, everyone has 80 of them, apparently. That's uh, most, of, most of my cabinet space is now filled with Stanleys. Uh, my wife loves them, of course. But I want to start talking about that in a, in a, in a maybe the, not the most direct way possible. I want to start off talking about Ted Cruz and pedophilia. Ted Cruz <laughs> grills Mark Zuckerberg over alleged Instagram pedophile network. This is a great clip uh, from Ted Cruz. He really goes after it. And this is honestly a, just a crazy moment overall. If you didn't see this yesterday, watch. These results may contain images of child sexual abuse. And then you gave users two choices. Get resources or see results anyway. Mr. Zuckerberg, what the hell were you thinking? All right, Senator. Um, the, the, the basic science behind that is that when people are searching for something that is problematic, it's often helpful to, rather than just blocking it, to help direct them towards something that, um, that could be helpful for getting them to get help. In, in what, I also, understand get resources. In what sane universe <laughs> is there a link for see results anyway? <laughs> It's a good question. Well, because we might be wrong. We, we try to trigger this, this uh, warning, or we tried to, um, when we th think that there's any chance that the results Okay, you might, might be, be wrong. wrong. We might be wrong. We might be wrong. Maybe there's an off chance that there's no sexual uh, exploitation of kids going on. So people need to be able to see the results, right? Right, right, right. Now, look, I have a crazy theory here, and this is something I can, I'm giving to Facebook for free. You can just take this, okay? If someone searches for something that looks like they're searching for child sexual exploitation, I don't even need the resources link. Here's what I would do. Um, immediately delete the account and call authorities on them. I mean, there's no good reason to, you know what I really want to see, uh, exploited children and searching for that. Just, I mean, not a, don't, just don't. You want to... I mean, I guess maybe someone who works for an exploited children's charity could do that. But, like, that's going to be a small percentage. You could probably sort that one out on the other side. I'm thinking it's a good indication for sirens and lights to be outside people's houses. That, maybe that's just me. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is. Um, how do I get from there to Stanley Cups? Uh, probably not the best brand association for them. I'm sure they appreciate this. But there is a link here. So let me walk you through it. Are Stanley tumblers safe? Here's what to know about lead in drinkware. This is from the Washington Post. Now, this has been a very quickly passed around narrative about these cups. These cups, if you don't know, Stanley cups, they're basically like, you know, they keep your drinks cold. They keep or, or warm, right? They're, they're these insulated cups, like, you know, Yetis, there's a hundred different cups like this. The Stanley ones, for whatever reason, became really popular. They offered a lot of colors. A lot of people like to drink water during the day. They want that water to be cold. So, and they're very, you know, they're expensive. People bought them like crazy. It's become a huge, huge business. And as that happens, people start looking at them with side eye a little bit. And this, what this, this whole lead thing seems to come from an online, uh, I guess, mom influencer uh, named Lead Safe Mama, who appears to be a well-meaning woman who wants to make sure that, you know, kids don't die of lead poisoning. That's a proper pursuit, right? I don't think anyone has a problem with that. And, you know, you think to yourself, okay, well, 
all of a sudden out of nowhere, everyone had these cups. Did we didn't really think about this? I can understand why people might have questions uh, right off the, the right off the bat. Um, and, you know, you think about it. Well, what could happen? I mean, if 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 lead somehow gets into the cup, my kids are drinking that the water in there. If there's lead in that water, especially over a long period of time, that could cover some cause, cause some real problems for kids. But bizarrely, that's actually not what they're saying is happening at all. And when you look past the first couple of memes you see on TikTok, you start understanding what the issue actually is. Now, there are there is a very tiny bit of lead in these cups. And let me go through what it means and, and how it how it works. It can be scary. This is from The Washington Post. It can be scary to hear that you have lead. It's a known toxin in a product that you're using, said Robert Bassett, an associate medical director of the Poison Control Center at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. However, we feel that this is essentially a non-risk. A person would need to directly inhale or ingest lead to be at risk of exposure. So simply touching it wouldn't necessarily present a health risk. Uh, when it comes to Stanley Mugg, she added, inhaling or ingesting lead would probably only happen in the likely scenarios, for instance, if the person put the lead pellet inside the cup into their mouth, or if tiny lead particles were broken off and consumed. And you might say, well, that could happen, right? I mean, it's theoretically possible that that could happen. Uh, not not really. Let's start on the outside of the cup. And what, let's go directly to the source here, because I think a lot of people see something on TikTok and they just assume the worst. And I didn't want to just assume the worst about this person, the lead safe mama, uh, because what if, you know, a lot of people on the Internet are just making crap up. That doesn't seem to be the case with her. She might be a little more worried than others are about this particular in, uh, situation. But, like, she actually did real scientific tests on these cups, and she posted them. Uh, full XRF test results of a 2023 purchase, Stanley 40-ounce Flow State Quencher H2O Tumbler. They're tumblers, not mugs. Tumblers. Tumblers. I'm just going to go through the lead part of this uh, because there are other things that, you know, there's, of course, it's made of metal, so you're going to find some metals. Uh, but this is what she found as far as lead. Component number one, exterior built blue silicone coating. Lead not detected. Component two, white logo marking on the blue silicone coating. Lead, not detected. Component three, center of bottom on cup's exterior. Uh, lead, not detected. Component four, uncoated stainless steel interior of cup stainless steel. Uh, number 304, lead, not detected. Again, this is the interior of the cup. Light blue, gray, reusable plastic straw. Lead, not detected. Thick, blue, light blue, gray, semi-transparent plastic of cap. Lead, not detected. Component seven, dark blue silicone insert in cap. Lead, not detected. Component eight, thick, light blue, gray, opaque plastic of cap. Lead, not detected. Component nine, white silicone gasket seal of underside of cap. Lead, not detected. Component 10, hard plastic blue handle. 60 second test, lead, not detected. Component 11, metal screw affixing hard plastic handle, lead, not detected. All of the components tested that could be t possibly touch you or your child, lead, not detected. Again, like some people are just saying, oh, well, I can't, this is some crazy person on the internet. Look, she didn't have to post the real results of these scientific tests. She did. She posted them and said that the lead was not detected. A lot of people would just falsify those results. Again, this is someone who seems to be well-meaning and wants the best for kids. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there's zero chance that lead is going to be anywhere on these cups except for one place. And that is, I'm going to show you, right here. It's the bottom of the cup. And there's a little circular disc. I don't know if you can make that out from your distance, but there's a little circular disc right here. You pop this off, there's a... a, a a piece of metal that is a portion of it is lead, okay? That helps with the vacuum sealing or something. A lot of cups do use it. Not everyone does. If you're really worried about it, of course, you can find one uh, that, that does not have that. Now, it's important to note that because of where that lead pellet is, there is zero chance that it can get into the drink. No chance, basically, of it getting in the drink, unless you did it intentionally, right? You'd have to do it intentionally for that to happen. The real thought here is that there's a risk of if that little disc at the bottom comes dislodged, then there's a little bit of lead behind that, and you could theoretically either remove that or try to remove it, um, touch it, uh, inhale it, put your fingers in your mouth. I don't know. I will say this. 
this, I spent some time with this cup today and a screwdriver trying to get this thing open. I don't know how you do it. I, I mean, if you dropped it off a fi- out of a five-story window, maybe it'd hit the ground and it would come out. But I will tell you, normal physical use, I don't see how it would come out unless you have a, a faulty uh, cup of some sort, I guess. Now, uh, the Washington Post goes on, talks about this. Yes, there is lead in these devices. No, it's not anywhere near where someone would be exposed to it, said Jack Caravanas, a clinical ex- uh, professor of environmental public health sciences in the Department of Global and Environmental Health in New York University, who studies lead exposure. Caravanos said he even tried removing the cap at the bottom of a Stanley Cup where the lead is used to seal it. He said he scraped the paint and dug into it using files and a screwdriver, but he said he couldn't even dent it. I could not, for the life of me, pop out this cap. I'd really have to drill through it. I will, you know, I can back that up. It's uh, really freaking hard. If you wanted to get in there, would you be able to get in there? But of course, I mean, I think you could look at this. You might say you don't believe me. You might say you might not believe the Washington Post. But probably if you're worried about this, you would believe the lead safe mama. And she actually talks about this again on her site, which it doesn't seem like any of the memes of memes of memes of memes actually bother to look at. Is there any risk that the water inside the bottle can be contaminated by lead? This is from her website. The short answer to that question is no. This is a serious but localized exterior potential touching hazard And with any of these bottles, the water or other liquid inside the bottles is not, capital letters, not exposed to the lead sealing dot on the outside of the bottle. And thus, the contents of the bottle are not lead contaminated. That's kind of a big deal, right? Like, that's the worry of so many people who are currently throwing out their Stanley Cups. And they're freaking expensive. Trust me, I've looked at my credit card statements. Lisa. Um... So let me show you, let me show you the, uh, the video of them looking. After they went through all this testing, they decided to, they wound up getting a cap from a person who, where the cap had popped out, one of these cups where the cap had popped out, and they decided to test the bottom to see if there was lead in it. Let me show you some of this video. I just want it to be clear to y'all, I did not say that the Stanley was lead-free. What I said was that it's lead-free in all accessible components, and I wasn't willing to just destroy a product in the name of um, finding out if it led because there was, you know, it was so expensive. But now we knew, we know that these Stanley are sealed with lead. So if the bottom comes off, there does appear to be a bit of glue here. Uh, but I would definitely ask for a refund, throw this out. You don't want this to be exposed, if, especially if a kiddo is using it. This was being used by a kiddo, obviously. Um, so... These should not be used if the bottom seal is compromised. Now, they go on to show it in the test and everything that there is a lead in that part. Of course, if that circle comes off, you you should definitely take note of that. But you also note that as she's showing you, she's putting her fingers approximately one centimeter away from it. Uh, You know, if you're really that worried about it, probably you're not going to do that. It is important to note, especially if you have a little kid, that if this thing comes off, you probably don't want to deal with it. Um, Now, look, I... Don't care at all what happens to the Stanley Cup company. I don't care if they're successful or if they fail. I have no investment in them. Uh, the cups are nice, but I'm gonna, you know, there's a hundred million other options. I'm not that worried about it. In fact, there's a part of me that said I should tell my wife, you know what? Those cups are poisoning our children. Every one of them, every time you give them one of those cups, they're sucking in lead. We're all going to die because that would save me a fortune. But the truth is, it's, it's not that way. At all. In fact, it's really hard to find any example of anyone who's ever been sick or really has ever become close to sick over something like this. Now, look, a high level of acute lead exposure can make you sick. A super high level, I guess, could make you very, very sick. If you just started swallowing tablets like crazy of lead, you get certainly very, very sick. Of course, the lead exposure risk that we've talked about for 50 years has been a risk that's based on chronic long-term exposure to lead, lead paint, lead gasoline fumes, all these other things that have been building up and built up over a long period of time when we used to use this stuff. I mean, I'm old enough to know. I'm old enough to be one of those people who would go to the gas station and see unleaded gasoline and leaded gasoline. Do you remember that? It's been a while, but I'm old enough to remember it, sadly. Um, Even if the disc comes off the bottom and the lead is exposed, 
you basically would have to then put your fingers in your mouth or put your nose up to the bottom and breathe it in. And even if you did that, especially if you're an adult, there's probably very little risk other than mild sickness. Uh, it's not going to make you, uh, you're not going to die from it. Uh, you know, again, like you, there's no safe level of lead intake, um, but it is something that is, it's, you know, it's not something that should be driving you crazy. If you're, if you're in the middle of cleaning your cabinets out, you can, you can hold on and pause just for a second. The reason why I bring this up in the context of the Ted Cruz thing is the way that social media has affected all of us, right? Like the fact that like serious, serious consequences like children being exposed to uh, pornography, to uh, being in the, you know, people who are looking for child pornography, exploited children. That's the highly serious part of this, right? The most serious part of this. And on the other side, there's stuff like this that, you know, again, might be well-meaning, might have some truth to it, but it's getting people to freak out to a level that I don't think they're just, you almost stop enjoying your life. People are just getting upset about it and they're almost looking for things to be upset about. Now, I don't know, maybe it's a sign of a, of a, a society that's doing better than we think it is, because, uh, I don't know, if you're worried about the one in a million chance of one of these cups having the bottom come out and then having your kid touch the thing and then also put their fingers in their mouth a bunch of times enough to make them really sick, like, I guarantee there's other things in your house. I mean, batteries are one where you have a much higher lead exposure risk than any of these cups, and your kid probably has batteries in almost all their toys, right? This is just like something that we get fired up about. And it's almost like how the left gets fired up about microaggressions, right? Like it's almost like they're looking for this thing to offend them, looking for this thing to freak them out, looking for desperately searching for something to make their lives more miserable. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? You know, something kind of gets popular and then, you know, these theories come out about it and everyone gets worked up and then they stop using it. I mean, we see this over and over and over again, whether it comes to medicines or beverages or foods. I mean, how many foods can you find on the Internet that you're not supposed to eat? I saw one that said you're not supposed to eat broccoli. Broccoli? Now, look, I'm happy to adopt a philosophy in life that stops me from eating broccoli. That's fine with me. But like I'm pretty sure people have survived eating broccoli for quite a long time. Um, look, I think a lot of people who come up with these concerns are, are acting out of real concern. Like, it's, it's legitimate. It's, it's earnest. And I think that's, that's not something to be vilified. I mean, look, you can do these things if it makes you more comfortable to avoid a certain kind of cup because you're worried about this stuff. I mean, you're probably not going to enjoy the drink that's in it anyway. But your social media algorithm is just going to continually blast you with this stuff over and over and over again. And while it, if you go down these rabbit holes, you get start getting fed these types of things and you start believing all of them, it's the same pattern that goes on with people who get moved to extremism or people who get moved towards more and more uh, crazy sexual content or whatever else is out there. Of course, the best way uh, to uh, quit uh, social media is by not taking it up in the first place and avoiding it at all costs, I will say. Um, but the thing is, on social media, these algorithms, which are the bane of my existence, as you may know by watching the show, just continues to serve you this stuff over, over and over and over and over again. Nobody wants the video that tells you things are fine and normal. Like, I, I'll be honest with you, I did this show today because I like this stuff, but like, nobody's going to click on a show that says, hey, the cups are fine. And no, who, who wants to watch that? I want to watch The, cu the Cups Are Killing Us. That's the, that's the show I want to watch. And I think that's the show everyone wants to watch. The Cups Are Fine is not that sexy a message. But The Cups Are Fine. Now, our lives, I believe, would be consistently better if we were able to solve these types of problems. If we were able to look at the world and say, okay, look, is this really a risk? You know, this is why I did that stupid thing called um, relative versus absolute risk um, protection squad or whatever it was. <laughs> it's a very long, uh, uh, long worded theme that I have for that because people don't understand the difference between relative and absolute risk. Relative risk may show some high percentage increase of you getting some terrible disease and dying when the, re when the absolute risk just moves by a little fraction. You know, if you go from a 0.1% chance of dying to a 0.2% chance of dying, that's a 100% increase in your chance of dying if you're looking at absolute or relative risk. And this is, of course, what the media likes to 
flood your feed with. At relative risk, relative risk, relative risk, when really what's important to you should be absolute risk. Is it really risky overall? So I will say this. Number one, if you get the thing that pops up and it says, hey, do you want to get resources or look at the child porn? Click the get resources and rethink your life. That's step number one. And step number two is a three-part process. I'll give it to you right now. If you happen to be drinking out of one of these wonderful cups that I, I adore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when you put it down, the bottom of the, cu- the thing drops out, that little circle that protects the lead. If that thing comes out, got a three-step process for you. Number one, eh, throw the cup in a plastic bag if you're worried about it. Throw it in a plastic bag. Number two, wash your hands. Now, this is a good tip to do almost all the time, but wash your hands. And number three, there's a lifetime warranty on these things. Send it back to Stanley and make them give you a brand new one. Free cups for everybody. And the off chance you can get that stupid disc off yourself, send it back to them and they'll send you a brand new cup. If you think you're going to get lead poisoning from the new cup, you probably don't want it. But at the end of the day, it should be about enjoying your life. And if you can't enjoy your life, then maybe the social media is taking too much of a chunk out of your brain. Joining me now is Bridget Fetisi. She's a contributing editor and columnist with The Spectator, a host of Walk-Ins Welcome and Weekly Dumpster Fire. And of course, you can subscribe to her Substack as well at Fetisi.com. Her YouTube channel is youtube.com slash at Fetisi. Bridget, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to see you. It's great to have you. Um, let me start with this. This is the big question of the day, apparently. Uh, should we root for Taylor Swift and <laughs> Travis Kelsey to be a nice couple that lives into their 80s in a nice marriage, or are they destroying all of society <laughs> and democracy? I know it's one of those two. I'm just not sure which one it is. I, I am a, I'm, I'm basic. I like Taylor. I think she's very sweet. I don't know what the nonsense craziness is around this. This seems very um, wholesome. Yeah, you know, I think it's I, like a cheerleader with a with a jock. This is like one of the oldest tropes in all of America. Yeah, it's kind of old school. Someone comes from country music. Uh, Travis, I don't know where this this came from exactly. Now, as an NFL fan, a person who like wa- likes watching these games, it can be a tad much with the the shoe yeah, showing yeah. her in the in the box. And I get why you complain. I certainly the first couple of games kind of complained about that. But I mean, in general, it's not like we don't we don't need to root for her life to be destroyed. And I don't think she's a secret plant to vaccinate us all at the at the voting booth while we're voting for Joe Biden either. <laughs> it, it It's weird, too, because she seems to be very popular amongst the demographic that people like the right in particular needs to to win elections. Mm. Suburban moms, you know, people will say, oh, she's, you know, little girls and Gen Z love her, but I think the average age of a Taylor Swift fan is actually a woman in her 30s. Mm. And these are people that you need, so it's weird to alienate them, and it's a very strange... I don't know, it's weird because on on the left you've been seeing a lot of, like, this is is a systemically racist country, this conspiratorial mindset. Yes. And then I see it now kind of mm-hmm. rising on the right and I'm I'm like how how so you think America should burn too? Does <laughs> everyone think America America should burn? What yes. is going on? Yes, we should, we all think it should burn. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny too. It, it, it's like um y- y- you kind of watch this develop because I think you're right to describe the left's views on a lot of this stuff as conspiratorial. Like, you know, everyone's a victim, everyone's oppressed, every white person's a racist, all these things that have been going on forever. And you do see this uh, at some point on the right as well. This is an example, I guess, of it. But like how much of this is just like online culture? I mean, I I don't. I think it's online culture, but then it jumps to mainstream because you have Fox News with a, you know, headline saying that she's a psyop, <laughs> <laughs> like the, Pen- the Pentagon. So I think once it gets to that point that it's on cable news, for example, it jumps, even if it is like online, you know, posters, yeah. sit, talk, right. basically, for yeah. lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. 
talking about um, like, oh, she's a psyop, and the, it's like this kind of fringe. I don't know where this comes from. Even if it's just them it, and it manages to make its way to these cable news shows in the mainstream, then now you have the New York Times writing an article about it. So once you have the left covering, like, is, the, is this, is it the manosphere? Where does this stuff start? Yeah, I, I I don't know. Explain what the manosphere is, because you you you've talked about this before. Yeah, I, I mean, this is I would say it's like the kind of what is it? how do you, I'm sure there's a better definition of the manosphere, but I guess mm. for lack of a better, is it like Andrew Tate and okay. and the people who sure. are kind of aggressively like masculinity is under attack right, and right. Um, we're all victims, which is hilarious. Um, is I'm not sure I'm not sure where this stuff started. Yeah. But it seemed like it came from that fringe right, the new right. What do we call sure, it? Sure, I don't know. What is going on? <laughs> I don't know. Like who is? Does anyone know anything? I don't know. Where does this stuff start? But then it becomes. Uh, I don't know. I I'm now convinced that the manosphere is controlled opposition. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, it's funny because all these things I think have. At least some element of truth. I think of there's an like argument to be made that masculinity is, it, it, we're not looking at that in the appropriate way anymore. And maybe the positives of that have been under attack. Definitely. I mean, I think if you look at the Taylor Swift thing, look, does the NFL want Taylor Swift to be in a box at the Super Bowl? Yes, they do. Of yeah. course they do. Do the Democrats want Taylor Swift to endorse an, an 85 year old uh, senile person? Yes, of course <laughs> they do. They would absolutely adore of that. But that doesn't make a conspiracy. That doesn't mean all this stuff is slotted together by the CIA. Yeah, and it's tough because a lot of these things have turned out to be true. So mm -hmm. mm. you, I joke about this now. And there is that weird, everyone who disagrees with me is a Nazi. That was the left wing, <laughs> yeah. that meme that went around, mm -hmm. you know, a child's guide to political online discussion. And now it feels like the other side of that coin is, um, everyone who disagrees with me as a psyop, you know, you get that kind of on right. the extreme right. However, there have been so many things that have come out to be true. People don't believe in anything. They've lost faith in all the institutions. But you, you still, if everything is a giant conspiracy, then what are we from a conservative perspective? Mm. I guess my question to you would be, what are you fighting for? What are you trying to conserve? Right. If, right. if this is just, if America is yeah. just like, it sounds very similar to the stuff I've heard from the, the left, just a different version of it. How do you walk that line though? Because you're right. Like the rise of the internet has brought to light certain things that I think everyone would have said were false before and wound up being true. I and mean, we can right. go through all the examples. There's no, you know, but everyone you know, has their version of what those examples are. <laughs> um, but at the same time, institutions, expertise take a big hit when that goes on. And if we don't, but if we completely throw the baby out with the bathwater, like I don't know anything about physics, okay? If someone tells me a roller coaster has to be this high to get around a loop, I better trust them. I, I right. better be leaning on expertise a little bit because if I'm building the roller coaster, everybody gets decapitated. Right. So how do we walk that line? I don't know. It's tough. I mean, you see it with, uh, it, it's like on the left, you have the defund the police and, you, and it's yeah. like, but this hurts usually the poor and usually working class and they're not all bad. Sure. There are bad apples. Sure. We know this. And I actually had Ravi Gupta on my podcast, Watkins Welcome. He's an Obama guy of the left, but he was talking about how if you look at the FBI homepage, so much of the work they do is to go after sex offenders mm -hmm. and people who are sex trafficking and, you know, spreading pedophilia and like all, all of the grossest stuff online is, and they're not all bad. We can't say, you know, the FBI is just a horrible deep state. Right. They do some good and serve some function that is actually something that we should be rooting for. Yeah. And I'm not sure how you walk that line because everyone's losing their minds. Yeah. So I, I and I understand it. I, I definitely understand feeling confused and torn, but I think, you know, my husband's such a skeptic. He's, and he's so, I'm so <laughs> grateful to have him in my life because he just is like, people are too incompetent 
and can't keep <laughs> secrets enough to have this all be a conspiracy. Right, right, right. <laughs> so too many people <laughs> too involved. Too many people mm-hmm. would have to to keep this, and then they'd go to the bar and get drunk and tell their buddy, and it would be out in two seconds. So yeah. I think trying to walk yourself back from allowing yourself conspiracy is easy and fun to believe when when you're lost or you feel this is how people end up in cults yeah that's true it's true it's, I, I mean get, at some level it can be harmless like you can have fun with conspiracy fun. theories you can have a pet conspiracy theory and not be you know uh i don't know some you know incel weirdo that's going to take out a post office but like right it does go too far sometimes and i think at times we just overlook the obvious here which is like you know, look at the NFL is a great example of this. The owners of these teams are all billionaires. The vast majority of these billionaires are not hardcore liberals. If they wanted to promote some conspiracy to have the game fixed, to get Taylor Swift in there, they'd have Taylor Swift date someone who lived in Los Angeles, not in Kansas City. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but we it feels like we're all just like grasping and latching onto any some, some any theory that will explain the universe. Well, that's why this one's so interesting to me because it does make the right look like wackos. Yeah. And that's why the left loves it. It's <laughs> yeah. the same reason I love the left wacko stuff because it's just easy and I can say look at look at these people over there. It's easy. They're using that against now conservatives. Yeah, but as someone who is that kind of coveted independent yeah, there you voter, are. Mm-hmm. the suburban mom who's like, "Ah, they're crazy and you've been pushed a little to the center and you're like, "Ah, you know, they're mutilating kids and taking them <laughs> from their parents on this side and on this side I mean they're they're like everything is a deep state conspiracy and you have it I still think there's I think it obscures a lot of the stuff yeah. that's e- really crazy on the left that is not a conspiracy that they'll try and say is just like some right wing, you know, talking points when you're when you're like no this stuff is actually happening. Right. But then Breitbart was right about this stuff. Mm. The it, the co- politics are downstream of the culture, and I think people who don't have time to live and breathe this stuff, they'll just see, oh, there's the right being crazy, and if your default setting is but the right, you know, if your right. default is like, well, maybe I could... D- vote against what I normally vote for and then you see oh there they are being wacko again I think it snaps you back to that comfortable place even if it's not rational or logical Mm -hmm. and so I don't think it's helpful I just don't see from I don't see from like a strategic position why this would be something you would die, like a hill you would die on. Yeah, it's a strange one. I mean, I think it's the same reason Barack Obama used to bring up the birther thing all the time, right? Like, he knew that was a winning issue for him because it made his opponents look insane. Right. And, like, when you can find an issue like that, I understand the politics of exploiting it, but I don't think it's a healthy direction for our society to go down. No, Even and though I definitely do it myself sometimes. Well, 100%. yeah, I mean, and it's something that you can, a lot of these people are just, they know that it will get them traffic and money and clicks. Yeah. And it's a, it costs them nothing to just be crazy like this. It's easy. Um, let me ask you one more thing before yeah. we go. Uh, the, the Taylor Swift had another uh, awful turn this week where people were using AI to generate photos oh, of yeah. her and all sorts of stuff. And like, we all know that like, this is coming. Like there's just, I don't know how it's gonna be stopped. I don't know how people are gonna deal with it. I mean, it's terrifying for anyone who's ever had their face on a camera before. Yeah. Uh, how does the world deal with something like this? Just solve that in a minute and a half or so. Yeah, a minute and a half. Mm. Um, first of all, don't put pictures of your kids online. Yeah, I, I feel like our generation should know better. You know, I see people doing this, especially new people who are using their kids to be like con- to, for content. Right, right. Um, I don't know. It's I wouldn't. You read about the stuff that's going on in Asia. They have a big problem with taking kids and making. You know, like. It, I know too much. Don't put pictures <laughs> yeah, of your yeah. kids online. They should be. They should have a right to privacy anyway. And now with AI, you should know better. They don't like get them offline. Yeah. It just that's one thing you can do. Mm-hmm. I as I don't know. It should be. Uh, there should be laws against this. Yeah. And I'm not sure how you would even 
manage the police it or enforce it, but you should have some recourse. I was reading some long thread the other day. A woman said this happened to her, called the police, and there's no, and they said, sorry, there's nothing we can do. So there should at least be some recourse Mm -hmm. if this happens to you so that you're not in this position and that you call the police and they're like, good luck. I saw someone on Twitter say, and this is somewhat controversial, and they noted it was controversial, but in some ways, if it's going to happen to someone, it's almost good it's Taylor Swift because if there's anyone who will get this actually changed, it's her. She's like yeah. the most powerful person in the universe. Yeah. Um, because they're... they're you're never going to stop it all, but there should be some way to push back against this. I mean, using your likeness in, in some way that you don't want for any reason is is wrong. It's the same thing if they started using your voice or Glenn's voice or my voice uh, to endorse some product we didn't actually do. This is happening as well. It's all happening yeah. already. I don't, I don't, there needs to be some kind of laws or something where you can at least, I don't, I don't know because the internet is... <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's forever too. Yeah. So mm-hmm. even if you get to take it down to one place, how do you, how do you find the people who did it? How do you punish them? I think you're just saying we're screwed. I think that's your summary of. of I don't. This. I don't know that mm-hmm. we're. I don't want to believe that, but we, we <laughs> might be. <laughs> Let it all burn. I guess. Yeah, yeah. There you go. We, back to the beginning. All right, Bridges Fetacy. You can check her out on Walk-ins Welcome and Weekly Dumpster Fire, and be sure to subscribe as well to her Substack at Fetacy. Com, our YouTube channel, YouTube. Com slash at Fetacy. Bridget, thanks so much for coming Thank back. Thank you Appreciate for having it. me. Thank you. House Republicans have a really narrow margin if they're going to re- impeach uh, Mayorkas, and the math kind of works out in an interesting way. Right now, they can lose two votes, two Republicans, but that's it. Now, there's a little asterisk to that, because that includes Steve Scalise not being there. So Scalise currently is not there. He's getting cancer treatment, so he's not there. If he's uh, feeling better and is able to come back for the vote, that means they can lose three Uh, House members and still get the impeachment through. However, Ken Buck, the one congressman from Colorado, he is saying he's a full no now. He is not going to go along with the Republicans on this. So now they can only lose two more. There's at least one other Republican House member that is saying it's likely they will vote no. I think it's Tom McClintock in in California. I don't think there's been a clarification on that yet. I'll let you know if I see one. But this is going to be really tight, and it'll be very embarrassing if they can't get this through. Another embarrassing vote. Uh, There was a vote that passed 422 to 2. And the vote basically said that Hamas members could not come to the United States. Not people from the Palestinian territories or people who know Hamas members or people who once were and have now uh, now cleared themselves from their Hamas allegiances. No, no. People who are active members of Hamas or participated in the October 7th attacks. Those people can't come to the United States. Now, there's a lot of things. Like, I can understand the, uh, the, the, the quest for diversity, but you want to import actual terrorists into the United States? Well, you might say, well, it's 422 to 2. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I just want to highlight the two members uh, there who voted against it. Could you name them? If I didn't tell you who they were, could you name them? Cory Bush and Rashida Tlaib. Now, it's... Oh, understandable if you said, yes, of course I can name them. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilan Omar. Those would have been good guesses. But in this particular case, uh, no, it was uh, two members for the far left squad were the only House members to vote uh, against this. Uh, One other, Delia Ramirez, an Illinois Democrat, voted present. Just couldn't be convinced either way whether we should have Hamas members inside the United States. I mean, it's such a, a back and forth issue. I don't know which one's good, which one's bad. Who knows? Um, finally, you remember the Senate sex tape? I hope you don't. I hope there's no visuals in your mind from it. But basically, it was a sex tape made by a Senate staffer who went into one of the meeting rooms and just had sex with his boyfriend or his hookup. I don't know. I, I actually don't know how close they are today. Um, but had sex with uh, some dude uh, in the middle of the Senate office. And everyone's like, OK, it's on film. And this is really creepy and icky. And can we please? No, please. No. There's got to be some criminal uh, cost to this, right? Well, no, they came out and they said, ah, actually, everything's fine. Uh, Nobody's going to be charged in the Senate sex tape scandal. Now, it was against congressional rules, but apparently not illegal. 
And like, I don't know, did you live in a world where you thought it was illegal to have sex inside the Senate offices? I kind of did. I thought I thought any public sex inside of a public room was going to be illegal. Now, apparently there are other areas. They're called cages. These are the members cages where office storage areas that are typically used for more discreet rendezvous. Um, sources told Semaphore, but this one, since it was in the office, they had to do something about, uh, and then they decided, you know what we should do? Nothing. So that's where it stands. Everything's fine. Have as much sex in the Senate offices as you want. The border is getting a little spicy. We've got the caravan, or what is it, the convoy going down there now. They're going to be protesting. Uh, you've got uh, the border bill going on, and they're going back and forth and fighting about it constantly. And there's so much stuff going on in the border. And you wonder why so many people keep coming here. It's not like we've incentivized them over and over and over again with promises of free giveaways and the fact that they'd be completely fine if they can just get here. And they can be protected from all the legal consequences of their actions. It's not like over and over again uh, we've told them that Sanctuary Cities are there to protect them. By the way, we have a new sponsor. It's called Sanctuary City. Do you want a life of adventure? Do you long to test your survival instincts in unchecked urban warfare? Then there's just one place to go. Sanctuary City. Where do you go when you want name brand electronics at prices up to 100% off? Sanctuary City. Heroin, crack, fentanyl, all flowing on every street corner. The police are defunded, but they wouldn't give a fuck anyway. Bring your own needle or share with a friend. Anything goes in Sanctuary City. Carjack yourself a Hyundai and get on down to our annual celebration of human waste. It's Excrementapalooza. There's poop on the streets, poop on your shoe, probably poop in your food. Feces, feces, feces yourself down to Excrementapalooza. It's cool to have stool on every single inch of Sanctuary City. And what better way to say I love you than by completely destroying the rule of law? Sanctuary City. Hello, I'm the progressive mayor of Sanctuary City. We've been trying the same policies for a century. Do they work? I don't know. I live in a mansion three counties away. Sanctuary City! If you've always dreamed of leaving your Venezuelan hellscape to go to a city where the government will pay you to recreate another Venezuelan hellscape, then bienvenido to Sanctuary City! More locations added daily. You can find us by following the map to any blue state. Warning, don't get raped. There you go. Sanctuary City left wing policies brought to life. By the way, that's available on the YouTube page, youtube.com slash Stu Does America. And now on our Instagram feed as well, instagram.com slash Stu Does America. Go there, share it, repost it, do all the things that you do on social media after telling you earlier in the show never to use social media again. We appreciate it when you do that. And uh, please spread the word. We're going to have more of these uh, ridiculous things coming up here in the coming weeks. We're going to be back in just a second. Before I go, I want to say a hearty, happy anniversary to Janet Jackson's boob, um, who plopped out in front of all of us at the Super Bowl. February 1st, uh, 2004, 20 years ago, Nipplegate, the uh, incident that gave us the phrase wardrobe malfunction, as you remember, uh, this was the... (laughs) Very awkward moment. And I don't know what was actually supposed to happen. I guess there was supposed to be some sort of uh, bra or something after it didn't uh, pop off. Everyone got mad at Justin Timberlake or something after it. I don't even know. But I will say um, it was very awkward for me because I was at Glenn's house watching the game. So I'll never forget it.